Hello everybody, welcome to today's video where I will be checking out Cooler Masters, I think this is a new thermal paste. Now we have Cryofuse 7 and the last couple of videos where I was reviewing air coolers from Cooler Master, you actually saw just the Cryofuse, there was no number additionally added to the Cryofuse, right? So in today's video we're checking out the 4 grams and you have it also in 2 grams. Now the funny thing is, what I wanted to try to find is the actual price and for the four grams I couldn't find it anywhere for two grams you get it for 18 euros now that is a bit in a higher price range cat category I'll be honest because we had loads of others for instance like polar term that were quite affordable in those terms when we take into consideration price to performance and everything all together and that was really good now right here what we get is Crowfuse 7 inside this eco-friendly box because they stated it on their website so I'll just mention that as well. You get 4 grams of thermal paste, you get this uh, grease cleaner and you get the spatula to do whatever you have to do with it. So in those terms um, I recreated the original test bench that I used for that uh, thermal paste uh, comparison. So we're having uh, Inwin MR36 cooling down AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D and that's basically everything that you need to know regarding the test bench. It's the same SSD, it's the same RAMs, uh, Kingston Fury, Renegade 2x16, 6400 uh, MHz uh, and basically it's literally the same. The only thing that's different is the GPU which totally doesn't make uh, any uh, difference in these benchmarks that I'll be doing. So in those terms we have to go through some specs and uh, basically it's quite poor when we're comparing every other brand that just gives specifications in those terms. So well, what it states on the box, uh, color gray, thermal impedance 0.03, specific gravity at 25 degrees, 2.8 and this is interesting because on their website it says 2.7 so okay scraper grease cleaner and that's it there's nothing additional to that there's nothing additional to that and then you go on their website and you check work temperature from minus 50 to plus 250 remember nth1 was minus 50 to plus 110 specific gravity 27 as already stated thermal impedance 0.03 that's it you can't find literally anything else except for those information but to be honest, when we take into consideration the thermal paste and how you apply it in terms of the density, I do have to say compared to some that are reviewed, uh, not recently, but compared to some, it does consist very similar of the, well, I won't say the same materials because I honestly don't know, but the density is quite similar to the original Cryofuse. So it's really dense, let's put it this way. I don't know the exact number or how they measure it in terms of actual numbers what you can compare to others but it's really dense it's not that liquid so you can even place it in vertical position and it really doesn't matter in that sense just want to give you uh, some sort of an idea how dense it is actually so when we head over to benchmarks and this will be really straightforward in ada64 extreme edition it held the CPU at 89 degrees and the clock speed was at 4700 and 50 megahertz so what we got right here is that it goes right above thermal hero quantum and thermal hero ultra but they proved to be not so good in those terms so regardless of that we're just going to skip those and we have it right above deep cool dm9 and right beneath arctic mx6 so in those terms what we get if we exclude the liquid metal in ida 64 extreme edition we got at 7th position, but I wouldn't say that as a negative or a bad thing. Because when you take a look at it in, in AIDA64, the scores and what we got in the clock speeds and thermals, it's quite similar and really, really close, uh, actually the same as uh, Deepcool DM9, quite frankly almost the same. And then we have Arctic MX6, which just scores above with the clock speed as well as the Polar Term X8. So it's it's really close, it's really there. So you're basically just choosing the price at this point. And the price goes to others because 18 euros for two grams is quite a lot. And we have to go to the next part, which is of course a Cinebench R23. So 10 minutes uh, throttle test. 
we have temperature at 83 degrees, 5000 megahertz clock speed. The score was 26,838 and when we're talking about passes in those 10 minutes, it actually went to mid 21. This puts it at third place if we remove the liquid metal again. So what we get here is Noctua NTH2 on first position, then we get uh, Crying Out Extreme. And then it goes quite in the middle of the MX6 and Crying Out Extreme basically. With Arctic MX6 having 83 degrees, 26,867 points, 21 passes, but 4,975 clock speed. But then again, we have Crying Out Extreme with 83 degrees, 26,845, 21 passes and 5,000 megahertz. So, of course, you can see the NTH2, what it did, and it's still uh, standing right up uh, there really good. So, all in all, what I can say is that it performs quite good. I'm quite satisfied. The IDA64, it's just such a small margin. In, in that benchmark and when we're taking 30 minutes test and how it performs in that segment it's quite all right but then when we go into Cinebench where we have more parameters to actually combine and you can check out the whole thermal paste comparison that I did back then you get more specific details and where it's located and with that 10 minutes of thermal throttle test it actually does quite well I mean being fixated at 82, I mean, of course, it drops and goes up and down. It's quite normal because the benchmark stops and starts again. So in those terms, I would say quite solid. But what I would say is the price. And it really can compete with the high-end ones because Noctua is also in the high price tier as well as the Thermal Grizzly at some point. But then we go with... Polar term, and then we go with DM9, and then we, of course, if it's sold separately for from Deepcool, and of course MXX. I don't have to mention anything separately, and additionally because of the price of MXX. So when we're talking about performance, it's there, it's quite nicely placed, and when we're talking about price, well, you can come to a conclusion when we're talking about that. So this was Cooler Master Cry Fuse Seven and i would recommend it only in those terms when we're talking about performance the price you can definitely grab something that is more affordable yet still can come quite close to the cry uh, fuse 7 and that'll be all for today i'll have another benchmark regarding thermal paste and it's going to be again cooler master but we're having uh, some sort of a different color scheme, I would say, but you'll see the point quite shortly. And then with that, I will definitely conclude this uh, thermal paste comparison in general with this system. Because we have new generations and um, most likely it will be more interesting for you guys to see, I don't know, for instance, 9800X3D or maybe some Intel or whatever. So um, I'll do a roundup as I stated uh, in each comment on that thermal paste comparison because I'll try to grab as many thermal paste as possible. And this will be a quite long video in making. I do have to admit that, but it will be done. And uh, just to give you a heads up, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell for future content coming shortly. Thanks, bye-bye.